So welcome, everybody, and thank you for coming to the first Mobile Security Symposium here at RSA. Um, we are very much pushing for an interactive type of uh, audience participation day, and uh, I'd really like to just get started by introducing Pat Burke. Uh, he's Senior Vice President, SRA International, kind of give you some background and, and where we're going with the event. Pat. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to attend this first Mobile uh, Security Symposium. Uh, we intend to do this uh, year after year. Uh, the consumerization, the rapid adoption of uh, the mobile devices like the uh, tablets and the uh, smartphones has really uh, created a mandate that uh, enterprises, both government and business, uh, rapidly adopt these devices, these capabilities into their environments. Uh, that uh, adoption is driven by the fact that these things are uh, ubiquitous in their pr personal lives. They want to bring those type of capabilities into the business environment. And now it's up to the CISOs and the CIOs to figure out how you do that, to do it smartly without compromising the enterprise. So I want to uh, thank our sponsors uh, for putting on this event. I want to thank our panelists uh, for volunteering to join us. I want to thank Eric for volunteering to be the MC, the moderator. I think we had to run up a pretty big bar bill to get him to do that, though. But uh, we got him, finally. Uh, most importantly, though, I want to thank you people in advance. Because just as Eric said, what we want you to folks to do is to uh, make this very interactive. I want you to share your dialogue with us. Tell us what your perceptions are of the problems, the solutions, uh, what your insights are into this particular environment, because it really has become a mandate, as I said before, it's gone to the top of the heap in terms of strategic uh, planning for all these environments and how they are going to attack cybersecurity. And when you get your C-level executives all looking for this to be integrated tomorrow, uh, we all know what the challenges are. So it's up to us to figure out how to do that, how to establish a framework, and to mitigate the risk. So uh, let me turn it back over to Eric. So thank you very much, Pat. So I am, uh, I guess I'd introduce myself. I'm Eric Green. I am your charter person for this journey through the day to try and keep things uh, on the rails here. And it wasn't that much alcohol, actually. That, that's tonight. So anyway, why don't we, uh, oh wow, someone actually forwarded this for me. Pretty cool. Take the microphone with me. So let's start with this first panel. Um, we're going to sort of go through the day by starting with talking about the threat itself and outlining it with some fantastic, you know, bright gentlemen uh, with very diverse backgrounds. Um, then move into talk about kind of the data portion of the devices. The whole discussion is really around the holistic approach to, to really supporting and dealing with mobile devices in general. So from the data, we're going to move into voice and dealing with um, you know, encrypted voice and people you know, breaking into GSM and how that is affecting um, you know, our lives. And then how enterprises as a whole can deal with sort of looking at mitigating these threats and just sort of dealing with it as an enterprise or a government entity. So let me start um, uh, with this panel. We've got Mike Guidry, who's President and Chief Executive Officer of the Guidry Group. And for those of you who watch the Discovery Channel, he's got a pretty neat show on there. Maybe he can uh, plug that himself in a minute. Howard Cox, Assistant Deputy Chief, Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section of the U.S. Department of Justice. And one of the hats I wear is actually the program director over at SC Magazine for their events. And uh, Howard did a great session actually with Adam Myers a couple of years ago for us. So fond of him for sure. And Eric Strom, uh, unit chief for the FBI's Cyber Initiative and Resource Fusion Unit. So welcome, Eric. Welcome, gentlemen. Why don't I just hand it right to you, Mike, and, and go ahead and get started. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for giving us all an opportunity to be here today. What I'd like to talk to you about briefly is how technology is really changing our clients and the things that we do. The Guidry Group is a company that works with high net worth individuals and corporations around the world. And our clients are having tremendous problems now due to smartphones and just the use of uh, technology from a social networking standpoint. Basically, let me tell you some of the problems that we would have from a K&R side, kidnap and ransom. Nowadays, when our clients get off airplanes or their families, they go to baggage claim. They lift up the little placard and it says, I'm Mike Guidry and I work for X company. And then there's some smart guy sitting out there on his smartphone 
especially in another country. And what is he doing? He's Googling the company, and then he's Googling that information on that person. So now I know who that person is. I know what's happening in that company. And he doesn't have to be a hard target for me, a chief executive. He just has to be with the company that will care. Based on that information, all he needs to do, and we just had this happen, not to one of our clients, but one of our clients' clients, in Mexico the other day, in Monterey, the guy held up a placard. Now the guy gave him $500, told him to tell the people that he was driving the car for, that he couldn't find the individual, and as a result, guess what? Got in the wrong car. Ended up getting kidnapped and killed within 36 hours. So it's, it's a big problem for us. The other problem that we have is with youngsters and daughters and sons and that sort of thing that hang out with their families on vacations. They start Twittering where they are. So now guess what? I can intercept in that chat, start chatting back and forth with them. And before I know it, I know where the family is. I know that their home's not occupied at that time. And before you know it, I can create another crime. So for us, smartphones and technology are really starting to give us a rough time, and I don't know exactly what the answers are. And I'm hoping to learn just as much as what I hope you learn here before the day is over. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Mike. Why don't we hand this off to Howard? And again, like I want to stress interaction. That's the idea here. So if people have questions or comments or whatever, please, uh, please let us know and, and write through the process. Go ahead, Howard. OK, thank you, Rick. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, from a law enforcement perspective, law enforcement, we talk about computer security, is sort of like the first responder of last resort. Only after everything else fails do people think about, oh, gee, maybe this is a crime and maybe we should deal with it as a crime. And law enforcement has challenges on dealing with computers in general, but specifically with mobile technology. Um, this is a developing area of both technology as well as, Michael indicates, social aspects of people using these devices. And so the criminal justice process dealing with this is going to be a challenge. I, at, at Christmas last year, my wife comes over to me and she says, oh, my, uh, my sister, my sister-in-law just bought a new droid. Would you help her configure her banking app on her droid? And my first response was, why in the name of heaven would you want to communicate with your bank on a cell phone? Why would you want to put the, the sensitive personal information that re reflects your relationship with a bank in a mobile device that not only could be stolen, but also could be hacked? And so that desktop computer, without the security that desktop computers have, is going to be an interesting challenge for us all. I said at the outset of my remarks, we're somewhat slow to start off here, but we can catch up fast, case in point. We had last month in Newark our very first indictment of hacks in a mobile technology. Those of you may have ever read about the fact that who hacked into the iPad short, uh, shortly after it was released and were able to successfully not so much hack the device but hack the network and get a variety of personal information about that uses of that device on that particular network. Again, that case is under indictment right now and I can only talk about what's in the public record. But the charges state that the individuals who did this it wasn't just for notoriety purposes, it was for economic purposes. It was for embarrassment of not only the device, but the network that it ran on. And this technical sophistication that they used was such that, and, and again, this is in the indictment itself, they're chatting back and forth about, oh, gee, you know, in order to come up with a viable defense here, maybe I should go back and, re and open up my wireless router so that I could contend that I didn't do it, it was a wireless hacker in the driveway that hacked into my uh, router and then used my computer to attack ATT and iPad. And it shows you the level of technical sophistication within a few weeks of a new device being rolled out that certain elements of the community are willing to use. If there is money to be stolen on a mobile device, there will be lots of people out there who are gonna be willing to do it. And the challenge for us in the area of law enforcement is to work cooperatively with the technology community, both the, uh, the developers of the hardware, the developers of the software, and the people that run the network to provide us with sufficient information that we can find criminals that operate in that environment. Thank you.